following are 13 practical tips on how to use a mantra or sacred word. Repetition with feeling. One can recite a mantra solely as a mental process, somewhat like training a parrot in rote repetition. While this may help train the mind to be one-pointed, it is not nearly as beneficial as reciting the mantra with feeling. Recitation along with feeling is a deeper process that brings greater benefits. In either case, it is important to note that the use of mantra merely to repress emotions is not the intent. With emotional challenges, mantra can have a stabilizing effect while a person deals with those challenges in other healthy ways as well. Chanting mantra aloud or internally. Chanting mantra aloud can be a very enjoyable and useful process, whether alone or done with a group of people. After some time, that process turns inward and the chanting is done in the inner silence. Repeating itself. One might initially use willpower to remember the mantra. This training the mind has a centering or balancing effect. However, it is not a good idea to use mantra to repress, avoid, or escape from other thoughts or emotions. Another approach is to sit silently with attention inward and allow the mantra to arise and repeat itself. It might take some time, but this is a subtler practice. Notice that repeating with willpower is a form of expression, while allowing a mantra to arise and repeat itself requires attention. Expression and attention relate to the indriyas of yoga. The process of attention is more internal than the process of expression. Also, attention leads to concentration. In turn, concentration leads to meditation, and then meditation leads to samadhi. Mantra at its own speed. Some practitioners and teachers of mantra recitation intentionally see how fast they can recite the mantra. This can definitely create a groove in the mind for remembering the mantra. A more advanced or internal practice is to allow the mantra to come at its own speed. Over time, the mantra will naturally shift in speed, sometimes moving very fast, faster than the mind might normally be able to recite. At other times, it will naturally move very slowly. Counting or not counting. Counting practices can help to focus the mind and create deep impressions that have a stabilizing effect. A practice where a specific number of mantras is done over an extended period of time, called a puraschana, can be very beneficial in clearing or purifying the mind. For example, one might do 125,000 repetitions over a few months. A larger and longer practice is called mahapuraschana. Yet, when counting mantras, awareness might tend to stay more on the surface level due to the external aspect of the counting. When the counting is set aside, the mantra can more purely shift to a deeper form of meditation, where attention is naturally drawn to the mantra as a single object of focus. Both practices, counting and not counting, are useful and have their place in sadhana, or spiritual practices. With or without mala. In the beginning of using mantra, it can be beneficial to use mala or counting beads when remembering mantra. A mala often has 108 beads. By getting the physical body involved through the motion of the fingers, it can be much easier for the mind to stay focused. However, setting aside the mala, disengaging the use of the motion of the body, the karmendrias, allows the attention to more purely go inward past body and sensory awareness, following the mantra as it leads you inward. Both types of practice, with or without mala, are useful and have their place in sadhana or spiritual practices. Four levels. Mantra will naturally move inward through stages if allowed. It is important to remember this so as to not unintentionally keep meditation shallow when it is trying to move into deeper peace. For example, the word shanti means peace or tranquility. The feeling that gradually emerges is more internal and peaceful than is the repetition of the syllables alone. When the syllables drift away, one might then meditate on the feeling of peace itself, which is more subtle. Initially this feeling might fade quickly and be resurrected by again remembering the syllables of the mantra. Gradually that feeling has fewer breaks or distractions, 
and becomes a somewhat constant, pervasive awareness. This eventually leads inward to a deep awareness that is the root of the sound. It somewhat defies description, but as a root of the sound, it is like a soundless sound of the mantra that is resting in silence. Mantra as a Name of God Some practitioners use as their mantra a name of God from within their religion or as given by a teacher. At first, the mantra or name might be used externally through repetition, chanting, or in song. Or the name or mantra might be recited or remembered internally. Then, the name or mantra itself might drift away as the grosser sound is replaced by a deeper longing or communion for what is behind the name or mantra. Mantra will lead. Sometimes the mantra is naturally trying to lead attention into silence, and the practitioner thinks that the mantra is being forgotten. There may be an extra effort to continue to recite or internally speak the mantra. Deeper than this is to allow the mantra to naturally lead attention to its deeper, subtler aspect that rests in the silence. This leading process can be tricky in practice, as one might just be falling asleep. It requires a bit of practice and attention to notice the difference between drifting off into sleep and going into a deeper, quieter, more clear state of mantra meditation. This leading quality is one of the most important aspects of mantra practice. Speaking versus listening A good way to understand this dimension is to think of songs you may have heard. Once those sounds are in your mind, they automatically arise without any effort. Initially, one may internally speak or recite the mantra. Later, the practice is more like listening to or remembering the mantra than actively speaking. One may or may not literally hear an inner sound. It is the mental stance of listening or remembering that is being practiced here. It is somewhat like remembering a person whom you love. The name of the person may come and go in your mind field, but the memory of the person is not dependent on the presence of the name. Dealing with thoughts. Mantra can unwisely be used to repress one's thinking process. Mantra should not be used to avoid life and dealing with mental and emotional issues. At meditation time, one can easily get into an inner fight between the mantra and the stream of thoughts. This is not the best thing to do. Better than fighting is to allow a period of time for inner reflection or internal dialogue to explore and deal with these thoughts and emotions then it is much easier to remember the mantra as it naturally arises in the stream of the mind. Japa and listening Some translate the Sanskrit word japa as reciting or repeating, while others translate japa as listening or remembering. One is an active process of expressing, while the other is a passive process of paying attention. These are two different approaches to the use of mantra or mantra japa. The process of actively reciting or repeating is more externally focused, while the process of listening or paying attention is more internally focused. The active process is easier to practice in the beginning, while the attention process is more internal and advanced. Ajapa Japa For the approach where mantra japa means actively repeating, this process might become automatic over time like spontaneously singing a song you have heard many times. This automatic repetition is one form of the term ajapa-japa. For the approach whereby mantra-japa means listening or paying attention, that awareness might gradually become a constant awareness of the underlying feeling associated with the mantra. This is another subtler form of the term ajapa-japa. Where mantra-japa means repetition, then putting A in front of it means without repetition. Hence, ajapa japa is repeating without repetition. It is automatic. Where mantra japa means listening or remembering, then ajapa japa means constant remembering without the effort of reciting to cause that awareness.